Hey up guys, it's George from Audio Face here. Today we're going to take a look at how we can import media into Premiere Pro and also how we can organize it within there. So let's check it out. First of all, we're going to want to open Premiere Pro and we're going to choose to open a new project. I'm just going to name this Importing Video. Choose a location to save the project. Click OK, and there we go. So you may notice that your Premiere Pro layout looks a little bit different to mine. Don't worry about that. We do have a video explaining how we can change all that, and that's popping up in the top right corner of this video, as you can see. So if you're interested in that, obviously just go and check that out. But yeah, let's talk about how we can import our media into here. You may have two types of media. Um, the most common ones would be pictures and videos and audio as well. So I'm going to show you how you can do all three of them today. So the first way, we're going to come up to File on the top left part of our screen. I'm going to click import and we're just going to find something to import so let's have a look. So here's a video of me of testing the autofocus on our camera. I'm going to click import and it's as easy as that. Once your video is imported you're probably going to see it laid out like this so you're going to probably see thumbnails. Um, if you did want to change that to the list view that I had we can come down to the bottom left of this window and we can switch between list view, which is shown with two squares and two lines. If you hover over it, you can see list view. Or the one next to it, which is like a little box. And that's icon view. Completely up to you what you prefer, but um, that's how you switch between those two. I do like this list view because if you've named your videos, it will show it really clearly. And you, obviously you can see quite a lot of video within one window. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it back to icon view because I think most of you will by default have that set up. So we've got our video there move our mouse over it we can go through the video and see the different sections to make sure we got the right one so really simple there another way to do that is open up your files on your computer so I've just got a few here this is actually my tea that I made last night nice so this can work with a number of different files and um, this one is a picture I'm just gonna drag that into the same window that our other video is there so we're just gonna make a bit of space drag that in let go and there we go there's our picture and what you will notice is in list view you're going to see pictures and videos shown with different colors. Pictures being pinky purple and videos being blue. Just for another example, I've got a little bit of audio here. And drag that straight in like we did before. And you see that the audio comes up. It's got a different icon and it's also the color of green. Um, when you switch to icon view, also it has that audio icon there. So dead easy. Now, when you're working with a project, all of the files that are involved with that project are going to show in this window. If you're working with a lot of files, it might be an idea to start to organize them um, right from the get-go, actually. So on the bottom right-hand side, you're going to see this little folder. You can see it says new bin. So when we say bin, we're basically just talking about the folders that are going to um, house our files. So I can call this um, music, for example. I click enter to name that. And then I can just drag all the files that I want into that bin. And that's where they're going to stay. I'm going to double click that to open. You can see that's there. And to go back, we just click this top left file here with the little arrow. And that's going to take us to the previous bin. One thing to note as well, if you look at the top, we can see what we've actually opened up. So here we have bin music. That means that we're looking at the bin that is called music here. If I create another one to so go to folder, and then we name that video, for example. Hit enter. And I drag the video into there. I open that up and you'll see it open up on the top bar here as well. So that just gives us an easy way to flick between each bin that we open up here. Okay, cool. So that's how we import our media. That's how we organize it. How do we actually work with it? On the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a little window that is named timeline. Now this is where all the editing is going to happen. What we need to do, we need to start dragging things into the timeline in order to create a sequence. Now a sequence is just a sequence of media, so that could be pictures, video. So I'm going to show you how we can use that in a second. So let's start by dragging something into the timeline. So I'm going to start off with some music. So I'm going to go into the music bin, double click, find the song and click and drag. So what's happened here, we've actually created a new sequence within the project. And you'll be able to access that within the bin that you had open. 
So the sequence itself, you can see, has been created here next to the audio. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but because the first file I dragged in is called Think I Was Going Under, that's the name of the song, the sequence has defaulted to that name. Okay, but this is actually the, the sequence here. So I'm gonna sh we're going to come back to that in a second, but let's just start adding a few more things to the timeline. So now I want to go to my video bin. Click that on the top. I'm going to drag the video in. Now, most video that's been filmed on a camera is going to be attached with audio as well. So this is where the different channels on the timeline come in useful. We've got three audio channels, three video channels. You see A1 for audio, V1 for video. So as you're moving your, your audio about, you don't want to put this on top of the music because it's going to leave a big gap. And when you drag that over, you see the gap there. Okay, so I'm going to use a shortcut Command Z to undo that. And yeah, we can basically just move this around the timeline. Um, I'm going to put this one at the start. And I'm going to click spacebar to play. Or we can use this button over here, the play button. Spacebar. I know you can't hear that, but the video is starting with the audio that we've got there. So it's all playing together. So it's easy enough. If you wanted to import pictures into the timeline, you can go back to the picture that we've got here, drag that in. And obviously this one isn't going to have any audio on it because it is just a picture file. So when we move across the timeline, um, we take a look at the measurements, the little increments we've got here beneath the numbers or beneath the, you know, the seconds and the minutes. Um, we can just click on a point where we want the playhead to move to. So I want to check out this picture. I'll click just before it and then I'll click spacebar to play. And you see a lovely picture of my T. <laughs> now you might notice that this picture looks a little bit different to what we've got over here. It looks a little bit zoomed in. As you import your media, they're all going to have different sizes. And what I mean by that is the actual resolution of the image or the video. So let's say, for example, you've filmed a video at 1080p resolution, like this one. When you import video that's filmed at 720p, or something smaller or something bigger, it's going to appear slightly different. Okay, so I've just imported a video that I found. This is just a time lapse of us working in the studio, but this has actually been exported at 720p. So you can see that here. Now what's going on here is that the first bit of video that we've imported, which was this one here, has made the sequence itself default to its size so that would be 1080 so this preview you're looking at this screen here is at the size of 1920 by 1080p okay and this video that we've imported is actually at 1280 by 720 so it's a little bit smaller there's, there's no need to freak out about this there's a really simple thing we can do to fix this um but it can be a little bit confusing at first so this is where i really recommend using the list view so here you can see the frames for the time lapse video that i just imported and the previous video, the first one that we've got here, you can see the frames per second, but you can also scroll along, you can see the duration of the video, and you can also see the size of the video. So you can see the sizes here are a little bit different. So that explains why we've got a little bit of a different size thing going on here. So how do we fix it? All we need to do, right click on the part that's giving us a little bit of an issue. So remember that was both the picture, because that's a little bit too big, and the video because it's a little bit too small. All we need to do is right click on the part, scroll down the menu and go to set to frame size. And this is going to set the video or the picture or whatever media you've got in there. It's going to set it to the size of the projects that we've got. So check this out. We'll click that and it just scales it up. Okay. And we could do the same with the picture over here, set to frame size. So we right click and we scroll down set to frame size and it's just going to make that a little bit smaller okay now obviously you may get some black bars depending on the resolution this is a picture um, that i think i've cropped most of the time with video it uses the same ratio so without getting too confused by that it just means that if you're working with 720 or 1080 or whatever as you set to frame size it should scale up and you you shouldn't have any black bars there if you're working with that standard resolution okay so I mentioned sequences before and I said that you can have multiple sequences within one project. So I'm going to show you how we can do that now. So I showed you the sequence that we created. I'm going to go back onto icon view. I'm going to go into the music folder 
and I'm going to find our sequence here, okay? You'll notice it's a sequence because it has a slightly different icon on the bottom right. Each bit of media that we have, audio, video, or sequence, will have a different icon on the bottom. So once we find our sequence, we can right click on it and we can click duplicate. And as it says, it's going to make a copy of the sequence that we've got. Okay, so it's a good idea once you do this to actually name the sequence. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to rename. And I'm just going to call this copy sequence. Hit enter and you can see that's got a different name. We know it's a sequence because of the icon on the bottom right there. Now, this is the cool thing. If I double click on this, it's going to open it up in the timeline, but it's not going to interfere with what we've already got. Check this out. I'm going to double click it and you see that it opens up. So this is still the timeline window, but we've got two sequences here and we can switch between them just like we did with the bins at the top. So if I'm trying some experimental edit, I'm trying to change a few things around, I can do this with the copy and not affect the original sequence that I've got here. And the really cool thing here is that you can easily copy things between the sequences. So let me show you what I mean. If we go to the copy sequence and I want to, for example, I've done a quick edit. Remember, you can learn how to do all of this in our other video. So I've just taken a chunk out there. Let's say I want to copy this little section. So I can then right click it and click copy or I can use the shortcut command C. I can go over to the other sequence, the first one we had. I'm going to find the end of the sequence so it doesn't copy onto something that we've already got here. So I can scroll across by using the bottom bar or you can also scroll as you would like a web page going across. I'm going to place the playhead where I want it to copy using the timeline. I'm going to use a shortcut command V which is for paste. So I'm going to use command V and it's going to paste in. And I've found this to be a real lifesaver because the amount of times that I've made an edit and accidentally gone over something and I couldn't undo it to get back to it. This is just really great. You can do all of your editing in here and have a safe copy. And the cool thing is this is only going to use one Premiere Pro file because remember, we're only using one project here. So I hope this video has been useful. Remember, if you do want to learn how to edit a little bit more, you can check out our other Premiere Pro videos. If you've got any questions at all, or you liked what you see, put a comment in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe to our channel, hit that bell button to be notified, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.